Then we will move to our next and, and last topic, which is moving completely uh, in a different direction. It is a great honor to ask Paolo Caione from Roma uh, to present to us the new progress in stone treatment uh, for uh, kidney stones. Thank you, thank you, Paul, for your introduction. As I am the last speaker, I take the opportunity to congratulate Ciro Esposito for this special day. I think that this is very well demonstration that minimal invasive surgery is a very important topic and several topics must be discussed. Uh, we have to find a final point of agreement for several points. So back to last mm, presentation, the microperk, which is really a minimal invasive procedure for stones of Piero Calicia's system, also in Picarix. We have to remember that renal lithiasis is a significant problem in all the world because it has been demonstrated an increase in prevalence, especially in Western countries, because in pediatric age there is higher risk of recurrence and because, especially in pediatrics, it's not easy to have a clear, complete clearing of the urinary tract. Goal of the treatment of stones in children is to achieve complete clearance by minimally or not invasive single procedure. We have to avoid open surgery almost 100%. Open surgery should be not more accepted for stones. But we have to remember that treatment procedures are borrowed by adult urology. We are pediatric surgeons and we often we have to borrow techniques from the adult. And no one of this technique is perfectly satisfying procedure in children. The extracorporeal shock waves is impractical or as often as partial results and needs the general anesthesia in little children. So almost invasive technique. The intrarenal retrograde surgery reels as high cost, often as a poor durability of instrumentation because the flexible ultrascope is very costly and not having very long life. life. And they have a small ureter caliber to, um, to go inside. The percutaneous treatment is more invasive, as a rate morbidity and a high risk of hemorrhagic risk. So the microperk has been recently proposed as a new instrument. Initially, it was projected to optimize the renal access in percutaneous access under optic control. The procedure adapts a single step percutaneous calicial puncture using a single needle 4.85 French. The first publication in 10 adults was almost re recently from Desai in June of Urology 2011. And recently we have in, all over the world an increasing use in selected indications, very selected indications. Each one of us is doing something different. Now I present how we do it. We put patient in Valdivia modified Galdaca position. And we used to put an open tip, five French Pollock catheter up to the piello ureteric junction, not in the pelvis, but on the junction by cystoscope. And we can select the calicious access by ultrasound and fluoroscopic guidance together. And we use the needle, 4.85 metal needle, to puncture the, the selected calyx. This is the most delicate point. This is the position, the Valdivia modified Caltaga position, which allows us to go from above and from up, from cystoscope and from percutaneous in the same time without moving the patient and having also good exposition for, for uh, caricial and, cari and, uh, and um, pelvis um, observation. This is the material for microperk. The needle, 
the optic wire, which is very thin with 10,000 pixels, and the arm on the left side, holding the video camera, which is very, very thin and delicate. This is the setup of the 4.85 needle with a three-way connector. The three-way is one, the middle, for the laser fiber, and the two lateral um, access for the water um, clearing and uh, for <coughs> and uh, for the fences. Just to see a short video of the position, selecting the anatomical landmarks, and then <coughs> we go ahead with ultrasound check of the calyx to select for puncture, and then under, under direct vision, we can puncture directly the calyx with the stone. You see the calyx is the lower pore calyx, and we can puncture directly, and we use also to have hide by retrograde pierogram. You can see the needle puncture the parenchyma and then the kidney. This part of the procedure is very delicate. If you go wrong, we miss the way, we have to stop. So this is very delicate and we have no second other chance. You see a little bit of bleeding here. This could be at risk for not clear visualization. We remove this toilet and then we wash inside by syringe. We don't use any pump. And then we can see, lucky, that the water was very clear and so we can go ahead with the procedure. The procedure, we remove the stylet and then we connect the three-way connector to the sheet and then we put the optic fiber flexible wire to the telescope and we prefer to go by intermittent saline irrigation by manual control, not by a pump, because manual control is much more safe and we can be very delicate. And then we pass the fiber into the central port of the connector, a 272 millimeters micron laser fiber, and then we can fragment the stone under direct vision. We use high frequency, a low energy um, for, for, um, the, for the fragmentation from high energy laser machine. And then we can have a total fragmentation and complete clearance of the stone, checking by fluoroscopy. And moving the needle, non-nephrostomy tube left, and we have a transcellular catheter and the folly for 24 or 36 hours. This is the connection of the laser fiber into in, in the central port of the three-way connector, and we use the, I repeat, the manual control irrigation with low pressure to avoid the risk of mobilization of, of, the, of, the, of the stone. And this is as we do. This is the, the laser fiber. This is the connector with a three-way connector. Now we can see directly into the calyx the stone. You can see on the right top how delicate maneuvers must be done by hands, never movements too, too quickly, very, very smooth movements because it's very easy to, to lose the position. If we lose the position, it's not easy to go again into, uh, into the calyx. Then when the fragmentation is complete, we can check by fluoroscopy and by ultrasound also by direct view. We check the calyx, we check the pelvis, and we can consider the solution of the problem. You can see nothing more stone. This is the pelvis down the, the calyx, and the procedure has been finished. Time of the procedure is more, almost quick. The most important point is the criteria of using of this technique. The size of the stone should be smaller than 20 millimeters. 
the stone position should be in one lower calyx or in the pelvis. The number of the stones should be one or two, not more. The kidney must have no dilatation, no significant hydronephrosis. Of course, no coagulopathy, coagulopathy for any percutaneous procedure, and so we used to have only pediatric patients. This is our experience from October 2013. We started this experience till now, April 2017. We had 11 patients, four males and seven females, aged from 18 months to 13 years. We main age 6.3 ages. One was cystinuria, three had hypercalciuria as metabolic disorder, and two had abnormal body mass index from 60 to 70 percentile. The preoperative imaging is uh, almost the same, ultrasound and uh, X-ray of the uh, kidney, uh, ureter, and bladder, or in four patients, or better, ultrasound and the CT scan in seven patients. We do prefer CT scan now to better precise, um, precise the anatomy of the, of the calyx to to have to puncture. The, star, the stone size was from 10 to 12 millimeters. The side was five in right, uh, left in six. Location was eight lower calyx, one in the middle calyx, and two in pelvis. We used it for pelvic drainage, Pollack catheter in seven patients to remove very quickly, and four patient double J stenting that was removed um, later on later on. The mean operative time was 88 min minutes from 58 to 130. Increasing the experience at the time was a shortening. The blood loss was in insignificant. The post-operative discomfort was very, very limited. The flak or vas pain scale was always under three. Paracetamol requirement was only the first post-operative day. Austrian stay was two, three days, but should be shorter. Main was 2.7 days. We, we would like to see in the first case as was the follow-up. Pelic drainage uh, by transurator tracheotomy was removed at the day two before discharging the patient. Complication, with two complications on, on the, um, the clavigia dindo grade two, one was conversion to intra-renal record surgery because we had a stone migration into the, um, into the pelvis and one had a moderate bleeding. One patient had very transient febrile UTI, so very poor, very little complications. At one month and three months follow-up, stone clearance was achieved in nine patients, 81.8%, and insignificant residual fragments uh, we had in two patients, not clinically mm, significant. All patients and parents had very high satisfaction. Patients go ho home with nothing, just a little hole of, of, uh, uh, of, uh, of a needle, or a sort of needle on the flank, without any medication. So, in conclusion, this our early a limited experience must <coughs> must just um, <coughs> confirm that there is not easy selection of the treatment of stones in pediatrics. On, in any case, we discuss which is the best treatment to to adapt for any case of stone. But there is a very strong request of minimally invasive procedures with very short hospital stay, long low risk of the procedure, and high rate of clearance. We know that lower pole calculi treatment are more problematic, especially for children. W, w as well are not very easy to, to have clearance. The intranasal surgery is not easy to achieve the lower pole, and percutage often gives some problem. It, now, the microperk is a very minimally invasive technique because the metallic needle, 4.85 French, is used as a single step to puncture the, the calyx. 
but as I told you, selection of patients is very important. Inclusion criteria should be very limited. And the technique of micropack is critical. If we miss the calyx, the procedures should stop. And the Valdivia Caldaca position offers us uh, very advantages, but uh, very delicate and precise maneuver are needed for puncture the calyx. And we need, we need a good experience to do that. As final comment, this is very minimally invasive procedure under diet vision, vision with short operative time, short hospitalization, and the minimal requirement of ancillary procedures with good cost effect uh, technique. In contrast, very precise selection of indication, small diameter stone only in lower pole or in pelvis without dilatation, delicate maneuver of percutaneous, still present a risk of, of hemorrhage, and we need experience for that. Thank you for your, for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much for showing us that uh, the vision can be achieved with so small instruments and all the progress that uh, it implies. Any questions from, from the web? Yes, some questions. Andreas Bertoni from Argentina. Which is the uh, success rate of uh, micropark in case uh, of recurrence? Can you repeat the same procedure? Yes, it's possible to repeat. We have never done it, but in, liter in literature there are several cases that we, they do the se uh, second procedure in the same calyx okay. because the scar is very limited. Uh, Thomas Smith from UK, is there an age limit to use micropark and renal stones in pediatric patients? Mm, we don't know. At the beginning, we select cases older than the age of three. Now, the youngest patient has uh, had uh, 18 months age. There is some case in literature about one year, but mm. I don't know it's safe. <laughs> and Lucia from Italy, similar though. Patients. Uh, is there a weight limit uh, of patients? Uh, well, the, the, the question is similar. The weight limit is not, there is no limit, limitation at all. But we used to have not less than 10 kilos mm. because there is some more risk of hemorrhagic consequence. Uh, uh, which, which is the real advantages of Valdiv position? Yeah, this is a very important question. That if you put in the in prone position, you have to start with the cystoscope. And so in a, in a standard position, then we have to turn the patient in the opposite. And if you need any other maneuver from from the bladder, you can do that, or you can do very difficulty. Someone is doing a cystoscopy and putting a catheter from prone position, but tell me. Uh, um, I have to tell you that it's not easy at all. The Valdivia Caldacao position permits to have both a chest from bottom from up at the same time. So for us, it's the best. So is uh, uh, the, the, the best. best choice. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I, I would just like to come back to the age, size, and, and weight. We discussed the lower limit, but is there an upper limit? I mean, can you do that in an obese uh, adolescent before he goes to Holger? Yeah, well, obese patient is never so <laughs> fine for the surgeon, but you can do that also in, 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 in obese because the stylet is long enough. Uh, um, um, the visibility of the stone when there is the obesity is not so good by, by ultrasound, so you have some more problems to check the calyx and, and, and guidance for the guidance of the puncture. So some troubles are in, in the obese. It's not the same thing that in the very thin uh, patient. What, if I can add just a little point, there is still a risk of hemorrhage. We are start, still discussing uh, in, in our group if a mini perk with a normal uh, instrumentation is, could be safer for patient 
than the microperk because the microperk is using a 4.85 French for puncture, which is not so thin. When you use the percutaneous HS, the SIBA needle is thinner. We go inside, we see urine going out, then we can de dilate it. And this is a little point that is something contra the microperk. We are using stronger instrumentation. Probably, sorry, just feel, we are going, we, not me, or not on me, but so, are going to change the way and do a combination of the SIBA stylet with the microperk. But pro progress is. is. <laughs> One more question. Lucia from Italy. Yeah. Did you identify technical factor predicting successful outcome? Uh, yes. Stone sides, not more than 15, 18 millimeters. Never hydronephrosis because the stone will move. And we miss with the weather is moving, and so you miss the stone. Uh, we have no problems with cysteine. Cysteine stones, you know, are not easy to treat. Well, no problem because if the cysteine stone is in a calyx down there, you can reach the stone and have a very nice fragmentation by laser. So these are the most important things. And not obese patient, I think this is correct. Anyway, the one, technique one, is still changing, in, in my opinion. One more, you, you are discussing small stones. Uh, would you consider maybe doing several sessions for bigger stones, stack horns? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, uh, in the same session, no. In different session, could be, but, but it's, it's better to uh, use uh, uh, percutaneous treatment or uh, uh, retrograde intraradial surgery. You could, uh, we did once uh, for a complicans, uh, a combination of microperk and RIRS, uh, retrograde intraradial surgery. You can do that by Valdivia Galdagao position. We, we use it once, I, I presented, it was a complication for us, but you can use both techniques at the same time. Thank you very much. Thank you.